Yes, so welcoming you again to this live open Q&A, welcoming you with love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness Bhagwan Shri Nityananda Paramashivam. So again, if you have any questions, this is an open live a question and answer session paired with unclutching, so you can drop your questions in the comments. I'll read and share the various cognitive shifts or powerful cognitions I got through uh, Swamiji's initiations and uh, Swamiji's discourse, what he shares with all of us and how it clicked with me and how you can uh, perhaps implement, it, implement this powerful cognition to free yourself from various uh, problems in your life. So uh, before we start, inviting you to check the links in the description. Uh, if you want to learn how to chant the opening and closing mantras, or if you want to listen to the Mahavakya, which I will start playing very shortly, the sacred mantra. So before we start, uh, just to always remember to be in the space of unclutching. So let's listen 40 seconds of Swamiji sharing about the context and the meditation of unclutching. Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, triggering of mind and mental activities inside. Even laziness is a mental activity, tiredness is mental activity, feeling bored is mental activity. Do not follow any of that, just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you, the pure space. Yes. So again, if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. One thing I wanted to share uh, at the beginning of this session is, like Swamji recently, um, actually Swamji has been in Samadhi for the last few days. He didn't come live for the satsangs, but tomorrow he's coming live. So I don't know in which time zone you are, but in approximately um, approximately 14 hours from now, Swamji is going to come live. So inviting you to join because when Swamji comes out of Samadhi, he always reveals amazing things. So tomorrow, uh, join the satsang on YouTube, on Facebook, on Nityananda.tv website, whatever platform you feel comfortable with. Um, just go and join and listen to the revelations that Swamji is going to share with all of us um, in a few hours from now. Um, in the satsangs before he entered, he went into Samadhi, he uh, shared about this pious fraud. And one of the main clicks I had about this pious fraud, um, Swamji was sharing, is that pious fraud is basically remembering that you are Paramashiva. So at the beginning of this live, I just want to remember uh, you and myself that uh, we are Paramashiva. So anything else which is not Paramashiva is a form of pious fraud. So constantly remembering who we are and from that context making conscious decisions in our life to manifest what we want to manifest. Uh, yes. So let us start with the right context. Swamiji initiated us into the Mahavakya, which is playing in the background, and you have the link in the description as well. Om Nityananda Paramashivoham. So one of the recent clicks I had regarding the Mahavakya was, Om is Hinduism. Swamiji was saying, each uh, lineage, sampradayas of Hindus, Hindu sampradayas, um, accept Om as one of the uh, of a symbol. Uh, they all accept Om. So Om is like a symbol of Hinduism. There are a few things which each Sampradaya accept. Om is one of them. So that was one of the click I had. Om is basically Sanatana Hindu Dharma. Then Nityananda, which means eternal bliss. But for us, it's also Swamiji, our Guru. So Guru is your connection in the physical realm towards Paramashiva. Swamiji was sharing that Paramashiva is in the unmanifest. Guru is in the manifest. So it, it's just an extension of Paramashiva. Guru is the manifested extension of Paramashiva. So remembering that and aligning ourselves to that, to the Guru Vak, to the instructions of the Guru. And we have Paramashivoham, which is the initiation that Swamji gives us, that we are, the truth is we are Paramashiva. 
The Paramashiva that Swamiji radiates is us. Swamiji resides inside of us and we have to, uh, to align, to integrate ourselves to that so we can radiate the space of Paramashivoham. So I wanted to start with that. Um, again, if you have any questions, write it in the comments. I read the comments and I share uh, various cognitive shifts I had regarding the topic of your question. I got a question offline which I wanted to share and um, yes, here. So basically the question goes, how to deal with the feelings of missing someone intensely? Missing being in the presence of that person or missing the communication with them, whether it is guru, family, friends, partner, whatever. Is missing someone considered a weakness? Not missing from the perspective that we try to own the other person, but just missing being around them, sharing life together, enjoying their presence like this. This pralaya is really hitting hard on our emotions. So yes, this, uh, this epidemic, COVID-19, has uh, shifted many things in the world and has forced many situations to stop, uh, such as engaging with a large amount of people. So because of the traveling and all that, maybe you cannot, um, you cannot engage with certain people in the way you would want to. So yes. So let's unclutch for a few moments. The first thing I, I would like to share is a, uh, Swamiji made me realize uh, obviously about the dualistic logic and one of the main manifestation of this dualistic logic is right or wrong. So here in the question we talk about, you know, is missing someone a form of weakness? So again, basically saying, is it wrong? Is it, is it bad to miss someone? So the first thing that Swamiji made me realize is that there's no such thing as right or wrong. Um, it depends of the context that many... Uh, Many, everything depends on the context um, that you relate to. One example that clicked with me was um, if you want to lose weight, if you want to be healthy, for instance, if you want to be healthy, eating healthy food is good. Eating unhealthy food is bad. If you're hungry and you want to satisfy your hunger, eating any kind of food is going to be good not eating food is going to be bad so depending on the context the objective the goal that you have uh, different things become aligned to that purpose or not aligned to that purpose so that's that's one of the first clicks I got um, and one of the main realizations that Swamiji uh, gave me is that it's not about right or wrong it's about are you powerful or are you powerless about it? If you are powerless about it, then you should bring powerful cognitions and come back to a space of powerfulness. And how it clicked with me was when you're powerless, um, you have mental activity, you have hangovers. Like for instance, right? You decide you, uh, you do something you said you would not do something and you end up doing that thing to a certain extent, whatever it may be. And then after that, you feel guilty. You feel bad. Then that, that's because you engage in that situation from a space of powerlessness. When you are powerful, there is no hangover. There is no guilt. There is no guilt. There is nothing. There is only completion. That does not mean that you will redo the same thing the next day. But whatever you did, you are very complete about it. There's no hangover. So really bringing awareness to whether we are experiencing any form of hangovers or not from the decisions and actions we make are very important. And it's not about, you know, being weak or being strong, being good, being bad. It's just about, are you complete with yourself? Are you complete with the decisions you make? Do you have any form of hangovers about what you're doing? You know, are you getting irritated? Are you getting agitated? Are you getting depressed? Are you getting sad? Are you feeling guilty? Are you feeling uh, not good enough? Are you feeling uh, whatever you may be? Are you experiencing any form of hangover? 
If yes, then you should look into your inner space and really figure out um, the right powerful cognition to restore the powerfulness so that you, you come back to the space of completion. And sometimes, you know, you might continue to do the thing from a different context. Sometimes you might decide, no, this is not at all aligned to what I want. So you're just going to ferociously drop it. So whatever it may be, um, but look into uh, the inner space is very important. Yes, as I continue expanding on this, uh, don't uh, forget if you have any questions, you can write them in the comments. It's a live open Q&A. So the question was, um, is missing someone, is it, a, is it a problem or how to deal with it during this pralaya? And pralaya, for those who are not familiar with the term, means uh, this COVID-19 is putting us in a situation where uh, there's a lot of changes and these changes uh, can, be, uh, sh can be shaking us in various ways. So the pralaya refers to that, the situation we are in since COVID-19 started. Um, missing someone. So the main click, main cognitive shift Swamji has been giving me regarding this, there's two things. First, like I just mentioned, the context is very important. Are you powerless or are you not powerless? If you're powerless, then you really need to look in and to identify what is the source of this powerlessness? Why? Why are you feeling powerless in that situation? Swamji was sharing a, a, um, a success. Um, he was basically sharing a complete being can lives wide and wild changes. He can. He says that you know Swamji can be in front of hundreds of thousands of people and give darshan like 24 hours a day, literally, and he feels totally complete and totally comfortable. And he can be like right now in seclusion, not seeing more than five to ten people, not having seen more than five to ten people physically in the last two years, sitting with himself in Samadhi and be in the same completion, same fulfillment. So it's all about being powerful. Um, so if some situations make you, you know, shake you, then again, having to look in into this is the is the fundam is the first response is the fundamental need. We have to work in the cognitive reality, something that Swamji shared recently. Like you have to work on your cognitions so that you remain powerful all the time. Now missing someone. The click I had is basically when we miss people, we, 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 there's a form of uh, connection which is not fulfilled. We seek a certain form of way of connecting of experiencing connection so one of the main thing that i got is like if you if when you're stuck in that space if you're experiencing that space build a strong feeling connection with uh work towards building consciously building a strong feeling connection with paramashiva with guru uh, that feeling connection is the ultimate connection and if you're if because of certain situations some people around you are not there and you're missing them then just do completion with the powerlessness of missing them and just consciously work towards making your feeling connection towards the ultimate, towards Guru, towards Paramashiva. Go to the next level, intensify that connection. Ultimately, that connection, actually this connection has no limit because when you connect a little bit to uh, Swamiji, to Paramashiva, Paramashiva will shower so much more than what you are doing. And that is why this relationship is such a fulfilling relationship because it is not, uh, the, <laughs> it's not, not equivalent. There's a very uh, nice song that Swamji really liked and he shared, I think, three years back. And the song was, the lyrics of the song were going something like this where, you know, I've asked you for a flower, you gave me a forest of flowers. And I've asked you for a glass of water, you gave me an ocean. So it kind of reflects how auspicious and showering the nature of Paramashiva is. So building a feeling connection with Guru, with Paramashiva is that. It's that type of connection. You know, you give a dollar, he gives you hundred thousand dollars. It's like the way Parama uh, when you give, you give in a certain way, you can give to a certain extent, 
but the extent at which Paramashiva or Guru responds to you is not at all uh, reciprocating your, your offering. He always gives so much more. He showers so much more. So that is why this relationship is of utmost fulfillment and the feeling connection should be constantly strengthened so we can experience that more and more and make it a solid experience um, in our life. Yes, Nityanandam. Yes. So, yes, again, if you have any questions, drop it in the comments. This is an open Q&A session. So I wanted to share about... Um, give me one more moment. Yes. So... Swamiji, one, one person was asking a question, a very broad question to Swamiji and Swamiji was sharing, ask, tell me exactly what is your problem. And Swamiji was sharing, it's very important for you to express your situation because when you express your situation, you have to be clear about your problem. Swamiji says, I know your problem. I know the source of your problem. Whether you tell me or not, I know. But if you don't tell me, you will not know. And if you don't know, then uh, then it's a, that's and even if the problem gets solved, you will continue to recreate it. He was sharing something like that, and um, so fundamentally, the major cognitive shift I had was about responsibilism. Whatever you want to create in your life, you're responsible for it. And you have the power to make it successful or make it a failure. Depends of the authenticity, integrity that you have towards that goal of yours. The will persistence to make it happen. The powerful cognition of responsibilism is very, very powerful because if you are responsible for what is happening regarding this project of yours, then you can fix it. When you constantly cognize that you can attend to it and you really want to make it happen, you will constantly attend to it. And by constantly attending to it, you'll make it happen because you have everything that you need to make it happen. The only thing that is the problem is the self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial, which would make you drop your own uh, decisions and integrity towards that goal of yours. So that's something that we need to constantly remind ourselves. If you want to make something successful, have integrity towards it and the will persistence. Whatever comes, just handle it from the space of completion. Remembering the powerful cognition that Paramashiva is causeless auspiciousness and that everything that is happening is auspicious. So there's no need for us to fall into a space of panic, to fall into a space of anxiety, to fall into a space of fear, to fall into a space of whatever space it may be. There's no need for us to, ex to generate or to experience these states. We should just work towards okay how can i make it happen 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 if you constantly cherish this then you're bound to be successful in everything that you do because you take full responsibility of it and and that's good in various ways because not only you're going to take responsibility for it but you're going to attract also people who are uh, cherishing this kind of space which will make uh, your project much more successful so that was one of the main clicks. That's the main uh, That's the main cognitive shift I had regarding taking a project towards uh, fruition to start to experience the fruits of a certain goal, a certain project. Another technique which helps a lot is to, is to when, whenever you work towards something, 
um, write it down or share it with someone who is perhaps working with you and all that. Um, don't keep things at the mental level uh, for various reasons. So always bring ma materialize it in some form, whether you materialize it in writing or you materialize it into uh, speaking, sharing, so that you you have you infuse more and more awareness in it because the more the only thing which are making us not successful is our unawareness the more you infuse awareness into anything the more you infuse completion the more you infuse remembrance of swamiji remembrance of guru remembrance of paramashiva the more you infuse that into what you do the more you'll have awareness and the more you'll be successful so there's really nothing stopping us from manifesting what we want other than ourselves and for that we need to learn how to handle our inner space and that is why guru is so important in the life of a disciple or a seeker or a devotee because the guru is gonna give you what it what you need in order to handle your inner space and bring it back to the space of completion so that's why uh, being integrated to guru is very important remembrance of guru is very important of course the One of the most important part of this also is to be in the right Vatavarana, the right ecosystem, the right atmosphere. Um, because the main purpose is to restore completion in our inner space, don't entertain and cherish things in your life which is not aligned to what you seek towards what you where you want to go have this constant awareness and discrimination regarding things and people around you you know are these things helping me to move towards my goal are these people helping me to move towards my goal so and if you feel that the relationship you have with someone or the relationship you have with some item is not at all the type of relationships you want to cherish but because of fear or greed you feel you are bound to have this relationship then drop the fear and greed and complete and and complete the relationship and see if you can shift the relationship or otherwise uh, move towards something more aligned to your purpose but it's very important to constantly remain aligned to our uh, to our purpose to our goal so that we can uh, manifest it and experience the fulfillment we seek through this manifestation. One thing I wanted to share is um, Swamiji is sharing Hinduism has so much to contribute to the world in so many ways, especially in the science of enlightenment, science of the inner space, in order to manifest what you want in your life. And um, that is why the various components of Hinduism, the lifestyle, the practices, the knowledge, and um, all the yogic, uh, again, practices to detox the body, to keep the body in the right space for the Kundalini Shakti to flow. Um, all this is is basically the, the, the expertise of Sanatana Hindu Dharma and the purpose of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. Behind the lifestyle, the science of enlightenment is the, is the source of the Sanatana Hindu Dharma. And that is why Swamiji is working, uh, is working very hard to re-establish, re I mean, it's already established as a nation, but to expand the nation of Kailasa, which is the only Hindu nation available on planet Earth now. We used to have many, but now uh, they are all gone and Kailasa stands as the only Hindu nation uh, where the Hindu principle, the cosmic principles revealed in Hinduism can uh, be lived and an environment to, to create ecosystems where these principles will be taught, shared and where people can live, uh, live these principles and, and manifest the power of these principles in their life and experience the fulfillment of being integrated to those principles. So, uh, Kailasa is a big work, it's a big mission, but it's very much necessary in today's world. 
because we have lost too much too much context about life the purpose of assuming a human body the purpose of life what we need to do we are lost in bo tiredness and boredom and entertainment and and ups and downs and like we we really lost track of the whole purpose of assuming a human body uh, on this plane on the planet earth so that is why the reviving sanatan hindu dharma revive uh, expanding the nation of kailasa is a very much need of humanity right now so swamiji is working very hard to do that so if you're new to this and you've never heard about this inviting you to check the links in the description below um, kailasa.org especially where you can read about uh, the various things the various dimensions of kailasa and its purpose and what it does and what is uh, what is its goal so reviving the enlightened ecosystem that Sanatana Hindu Dharma has is, is very much required, is a need of, uh, of today's world. Let's listen to Swamiji for a moment. Decide to unclutch, not to follow any thoughts, emotions, triggering of mind and mental activities inside. Even laziness is a mental activity, tiredness is mental activity, feeling bored is mental activity. Do not follow any of that, just decide not to follow any mental activity and sit as you, the pure space. Yes, so always remembering the importance of unclutching in our life, to use it on a regular basis. Swamji says, if you have two minutes to enrich someone, just give them the signs of unclutching and that will do wonders for their life if they implement it. So with this, I wanted to close today's live session, thanking you for joining, inviting you to join tomorrow at a similar time around 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, again, it's an open live question. So whenever you join, if you have any questions, if you went through something during the day and you want to have clarity or a different perspective, write your question in the comments and I'll share the various cognitive shifts I got from Swamiji. So with this, inviting you to check the links in the description, a Nation of Kailasa, the revival of Hinduism, of Sanatana Hindu Dharma, the enlightened ecosystem, and the Kailasa Nityananda Media House in Kailash, or if you want to access the Mahavakya or uh, various other clips of Swamiji Satsang, some short clips, five minutes clips, Swamiji Satsang, if you want to contemplate on the cosmic principles that Swamiji reveals. And don't forget tomorrow in approximately now uh, 13 hours, Swamiji is going to come live. So uh, join Nityanda TV, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever and uh, come and listen to what Swamiji is going to reveal with us tomorrow after five days of being in Samadhi, intense Samadhi. So with this, we'll close with the Purna Mantra. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadhaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sarvam Bhagavat Shri Nityananda Paramashivam Padukar Panamastu Om Nityanandam Yes. Nityanandam, be blissful.